Welcome back to another day at the shop. Today we have an Audi RS3 on the dyno. Is it faster than my M3? Well, you're gonna have to stay tuned to find out. What's going on? My name is Brian. Thanks for watching Keys Motorsports. If you like our videos, give us a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe and check us out at keysmotorsports.com. We have been posting a couple little vlog videos here and there, and I didn't think you guys liked it, but you guys liked it a lot more than I thought you would. So, hey, we're back here again. I wasn't gonna film this. I went with my friend in today, and uh, he has an Audi RS3, and this thing is insane, especially since it is all-wheel drive. We've gone on the track together, and this thing puts out some serious power. So today, we're gonna strap it up to the dyno. We're going to do a couple runs. Uh, we're going to do some base runs and then we're also going to do some runs with his JB4 that we installed over here and we're going to see how much power it puts down and see how it compares to my F80 M3. Now, as many of you know, one of the big advantages of the RS3 is that it is all-wheel drive with a front-wheel drive bias. Now, as you'll notice, we only have two pods set up instead of four. That is because, you know, with BMW, you can do something like X-Delete where you get rid of front wheel drive and it's just rear wheel drive. With the Audis, you can actually disable the rear wheel drive and make it only front wheel drive so we can do things like dyno it. So what he already did is he pulled Fuse 44 in here and that is supposed to completely disable rear wheel drive so that we can dyno with just front wheel. Now, if you are going to try that, be sure to do it at your own risk. I'm a BMW guy, as you can see here. Um, so this is my first experience with this, uh, but hey, you're gonna find out what happens in today's video. So with that, I'm gonna put the car on the Dynapacks, we're gonna set up the computer, and then we're gonna start with our runs. Alright, so right now the car is hooked up on the dyno with the front wheels. We have that fuse pulled. We have a million codes on the dash, but that should be okay. And then what we have to do is we have to tell the computer the gear ratios, final drive, and that sort of thing so it can help us calculate the horsepower and make sure that everything functions correctly. So with that, I'm going to set it up on the computer and then we're going to start dynoing. Alright, it's fan time, so we're going to turn this guy on and these and we're ready to go. All right, so as I said before, not an Audi guy. Um, so to be sure that we didn't have power to the rear wheels, we just used jacks and just lifted it up and then just tapped the throttle, went like two miles an hour and saw if the wheels are spinning. In the back, we're definitely spinning. So I'm not super convinced on the, um, the fuse yet. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna put it in actual dyno mode, which we tried to do anyway but I think the fuse being pulled kind of messed with it. So we're putting the fuse back in, we're going to put it in dyno mode, which is you put the car in accessory mode, you push the hazard button, and then you hit the throttle five times really fast. So it's like hazard, boom, 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 boom. And then you, you'll see your traction control turn off, and then that's supposed to put it in dyno mode and then disable the rear wheels. But it didn't work, so we're gonna try again. All right, a little bit of a status update does not like just doing front wheel drive. So instead of wasting extra time, we are going to just put the pods on the rear because we have all four. So, hey, we're just gonna use them. And then we will get back to dynoing. So we're just gonna throw those pods on and then we'll be back. All right, right now the car is fully on the dyno on four pods. Um, typically what we do, this is kind of some of the stuff we don't really show. Um, you have master pods and then you also have secondary pods. So with this, you always wanna put the master pods where the most power is being generated. Now on BMWs, it's the rear wheels because they're, they're rear wheel biased. With the Audi, they're front. So what you do on cars like this is we have the master pods in the front and the back ones are basically just going to free spin. I'm not gonna put any load on them. Um, and that's just so that we really get a reading from the front. It's just how these work. Um, so with that, we have it all set up. We'll see what it does. All 
right, we finally got it to dyno. All right, so to the wheels, 357 horsepower, and the torque is 343 foot-pound torque. So again, bone stock right now. There's nothing, nothing on it. Run number two, little, little better in torque, a little worse in horsepower. It's 354 horsepower and 347 torque. So pretty good numbers, especially since it's all wheel drive. Map number two. And what's, what's map number two? Do you know? Two PSI? Two PSI over stock. Two PSI over stock. Do you know what stock is? 14-ish? So this is about 16-ish. All right, everything's loaded, ready to go? So he's changing the map on his phone while we're doing this. So you wonder what's happening here. All right, let's rock. Seventeen point seven. Seventeen point seven. All right. So when we look at the number, our horsepower was at three hundred and fifty-two. But it comes in a lot. Torque. Yeah, the torque's way up. It's 352, but if you look at the graph, it comes in a heck of a lot sooner. So I'll show you the graph after I do this next run. And then the torque is 397. So it went from like the 340s to 397. So huge jump in torque right there. So let's do another run and then I'll show you what the screen looks like and then we'll do, we have other maps, right? Okay, good. All right, so we're getting a little heat soak. The horsepower is going down. We went to 346, and our torque is at 391. So let me show you this real quick. All right, so if you look at our graph here, these were the base runs, and then these were the runs afterwards. So here's the base, and here's after. So even though the horsepower is minimally different, you'll notice that it really comes in a heck of a lot sooner, so it really puts you in your seat more. Um, same with the torque. The torque just comes in a lot more. Now the torque number is a lot more, but yeah, so far, very happy with the results. Three fifty-three horsepower, four fifteen torque. So your horsepower really isn't changing all that much, but the torque is what's going up. 415 torque all wheel drive, I mean, that's a good number and it's a light car. Three fifty three. Again, it's very consistent with that number. And then four sixteen nine nine. So call it four seventeen for the torque. So definitely going in the right direction. But not a tremendous difference. I guess it's still a pretty good difference actually in, in all the maps. So I'm surprised about the horsepower, it's not changing. But it, it is coming in drastically sooner, so you'll definitely feel it a lot more. But for dyno bragging rights, it doesn't doesn't work. But if you if you're on the quarter mile, you're definitely gonna have improved numbers. Dyno is is good for some things, but for like zero to sixty, you wouldn't be able to tell an accurate zero to sixty with, with a dyno. Um, but the horsepower number, the overall horsepower number you can see in the, in the torque number is definitely going up. All right, so now we're gonna run map four. It's 20 PSI. No, more than 20 PSI. We don't know how much it is. We're gonna tell you. That was a solid run. So that time we got 368 horsepower and 414 foot-pound torque. So we're starting to see the horsepower jump up. Um, doesn't really look like a tremendous amount more than before, but still going in the right direction. All right, so our numbers have been pretty good. Um, last one was 368 horsepower and 414 torque, so pretty good numbers. I'll show you what the graph looks like. So this is the one that just cra crapped out of me. It was holding 20 PSI and just, just dropped. So with the JB4, it alters the signal on the sensor, so maybe the ECU just saw something out of tolerance and freaked out, so not really sure what happened with that, but um, again, here, here's base, here's base, and then here's 
everything else. Um, you can definitely tell that, you know, especially that last map, that you're, you're really getting, you know, you're getting off to a better start because your power is coming in sooner, and then it's just holding that much more. And same with our our torque over here. It's just you get a big spike of torque instead of it dying off around, you know, around this area right here, around you know, 2,700 RPM or so. Um, and then it really just does a great job at holding it. So it's amazing how, how tunable these cars are, you know, similar to the BMWs and whatnot. So overall, great results. This is not one I was wearing a minute ago. <laughs> That's because I forgot to record an ending. So what happened was we did the RS3 video and put out some great numbers. And then right after that, we were going to put some content of an F83 M4 in, which has insane numbers, but we decided, hey, let's make that its own video. So you're gonna have to come back for that. But anyway, once again, my name is Brian. Thanks for watching Keys Motorsports. If you are interested in a JB4 for your RS3, we have them down in the link below. Thanks for watching today. Give us a thumbs up, make sure to subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video with that M4 convertible.